star-crossed, ill-fated, or snake bit. Sometimes when it comes to livestock, similarly, no matter what you do, there may be one animal in particular that seems ill-suited for life. For Rami, the main antagonist of his life seems to hold the theme of inanimate objects. Grapevines, wild rose bushes, and most recently, water. Predators can come in many forms. Plants are the biggest hunters so far, and our ducks a fearsome second. And so with this morning's chores, I found Rami soaked to the bone. I didn't hear it happen. I usually don't. I don't want him to get a chill, so let's get to work drawing him off. I grabbed some spare towels, managed to find a hair dryer. I don't use a hair dryer for myself, but have found it invaluable to keep around for livestock and our shelter. It's not uncommon in the spring for a chicken to drag its newly hatched chicks trudging through the morning dew, and then the chicks get chilled, then need a bit of rescuing before reuniting them back with their mama. For sheep, spare towels, and lastly, a hair dryer have been invaluable for drying up the lambs and cleaning up after lambing. What I'm planning to do is sop up as much water as possible. The wool acts a lot like a sponge and I need to move as much water out before it freezes on him. I've dressed him up over the years and he likes to play with the tarps, so I'm not too worried about how he'll react to the towel. Though animals, through no fault of their own, can react with aggression or a fight response to fear or pain, so that's something I like to keep in mind even with livestock I've had for years. On to drying. He's acting super bored and keeps running off, but I'm not done with him yet. I couldn't find his halter and lost another towel along the way of finding the hair dryer. So I resolved to bribes. I pulled out some extra aromatic hay and it smells so good. I plop it down and he's all set. He's been pretty good, but if he started to rear up or get dangerous, I would resort to restraining him physically. Some folks have told me that it looks bad or harmful or scary, but some things must be done for your safety and theirs. I think a little information about the bigger picture really helps calm those fears of whether these things are actually helpful or necessary. Continuing on, his blood flow to his legs still feel pretty good. He is cold and the water's freezing on the surface of his wool. Even though his skin's wet, it's still warm. The only part of his body untouched by water at this point is his head and upper back. He really got himself in a pickle. But I'm really glad I didn't wake up to a sheepsicle this morning. I spent a considerable amount of time wringing out his wool and the towel is getting pretty soaked now. Even so, Rami is still sopping wet. Time to take this impromptu cursed spa day up a notch. I've never really introduced a sheep to the hair dryer before. It's new and weird, so they all seem apprehensive about its nature. To desensitize Remy, I'm using a trick I learned from a dentist years ago. So what I'm doing is introducing him to the hair dryer. First off, I'm patting him, patting the dryer. This is to introduce him in a body language that he might understand as non-harm. I'm watching his body language and looking for tension in his face and shoulders. He's pretty relaxed here, so I'm moving quickly. A little known fact is that sheep share a single brain cell so in desensitizing him, it'll percolate through osmosis to the rest of the flock. This is evident in how they act like a fluid in larger flocks. Once he trusts the hair dryer to get close enough to his body, it's time to turn it on. I've noticed when working with his sheep, it helps to ease into transitions rather than just dive both toes in. I turn the hair dryer on and off in short one to two second sessions, so he gets used to the lower setting and ease into scritch him, his favorite at the same time. So he understands the sensation of air blowing as safe he was tense at first, but now is relaxed into it, eating his hay while I'm able to get to work. Within short order, he's even begun to wag his tail when I worked on his hindquarters. Even so, I'm growing impatient with using the dryer on low, and also with how much work I have left. So to speed things up, it's time to get full blast in the hair dryer. Unfortunately, the hair dryer settings involves the off switch between the low and the high switch. This abrupt stop and change really startles the sheep, employing the same technique of desensitizing as earlier. I alternate the hair dryer between low and off in short bursts so he gets accustomed to the change of sounds. And then start shifting the hair dryer from low to off, then high, then back to off, and back to low, over and over. Once I see his tension relax and he stops giving me the side eye, I start getting into high mode. We are melting ice cubes here, literally. The other sheep have decided to take the opportunity to eat the hay as well. And don't mind me blowing the hair dryer onto them as well. There's no sense of personal space with this flock. Now that it's pretty much sunny sailing ahead, 
What would your ideal sheep do in this situation? Drop me a line or a comment. I love reading about your sheepy experiences too. I'm sure by now you've had enough about rams. So what if he was a lamb? What kind of other situations might you encounter that would cause similar hypothermia emergency in sheep? With older sheep, it can be due to poor feeding practices, age or illness, causing a sheep to not gain enough weight, or grow subpar wool to protect them through harsh weather. In the case of lambs, especially in winter, maybe you might wake up to find a new mom with an unresponsive newborn lamb. Lambs keep warm through nursing, and some moms don't realize that they had a baby and neglect to dry off their lamb to stimulate it to nurse, or just focus on drying off the lamb and not letting it nurse. This is why you see a lot of farmers doing all-nighters, doing lambing or kidding season, plus other such things as reorienting twins, moving hooves inside the U, etc. Anyway, cutting to the point, if the lamb, kid, or even chick is unconscious, I have found it easier to bring them inside and give them a hot water bath, either resting directly in the water or in the bag with their head out of the water. Circulating water helps move the cold away faster if you can muster that. These situations can be stressful, so it's important to be kind to yourself and keep an equanimous mindset. Once they regain consciousness, I like to stick my finger in their mouth to check for a sucking reflex. Some folks like to tube their newborns, but for me the risk of getting down the wrong pipe is too high. Plus, when the animal's cold, their tummy isn't functioning, so for me the risk of air is too high for me personally, but for others it's easy enough. Once the lamb is responsive, it's time to attempt to graft the lamb back with the mom. Sometimes the new mom just doesn't get it. And if you do end up bottle feeding though, the main thing to remember is to grab some colostrum from the ewe if you don't have any on hand, and give that lamb a good start. Bottle feeding can be a hassle. On the other hand, it can result in a lovely pet lamb. So with this coming spring lambing season, I hope you have a calm one with gifted ewes imbued with the grace of maternal instincts and perfect births. Don't forget, I appreciate you, thank you, and if you found this helpful, leave a like and subscribe. In the meantime, stay soft.